This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Good morning. The time right now is 427. We finally made it to Friday, the end of your work week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lauren Casey. A few top stories before we get to the show this morning. We do want to start things off with the latest numbers. These are from the State Health Department, and we always update you on these numbers as soon as they come into the newsroom, and that's around the lunch hour. As of yesterday, we've learned about 45 new COVID-19 deaths. That brings the state's total to more than 700. More than 200 of the deaths happened right here in Marion County. More than 30 13,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for this virus so far. We will continue to keep you updated on the very latest numbers from the state health department. Again, that'll be around noon, and we'll talk to you today about what these numbers mean and the very latest on the fight against COVID-19. Well, something else we've been monitoring and following since this all started is the impact on businesses, especially small businesses on Main Street right in our communities. And so today, our Alyssa Donovan is going to bring us a story from out in Knightstown, a small community that's working together to get through these tough times. We know that a lot of businesses did not get the loans that they're expecting from the federal government, but sometimes you don't have to wait for the government to give you money or to help you out during these times. You can just look to your neighbors in your community to help you get by. And so we're going to tell you about how one business owner is giving back to other businesses in that community to keep them going, providing them loans during this time and how that's been able to help them out. So that story is coming up with Alyssa shortly this morning. We do want to take a turn now to our forecast and check in with Todd Clausen and see what we can expect for our Friday. And Todd, I think we have some good news as we end the work week. Yeah, I know we are ending the work week on a pretty good note weather-wise after the rainfall yesterday, Lauren. Today we are back into some sunshine and warmer temperatures as well. Now, one thing you'll have to keep an eye on, there's a little bit of moisture out there still, so there could be a little bit of patchy fog that'll settle in, especially in western locations. But temperatures this morning are sitting in the 40s and 50s where it's a little bit cooler. That's where the skies have started to clear already. Where it's a little bit warmer, that's where we still have clouds in place. But it does, it turns into a great day for us with Seasonable temperatures, partly sunny skies, and temperatures that will be in the upper 60s. Some of you may even hit the 70 degree mark. Uh, more clouds later in the day than uh, this morning, and that will lead to more rain heading our way for the weekend. We'll talk more about that forecast for you coming up in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you so much. We do want to take time and bring you some good news, of course, on Friday. We always have our Good News Friday segment, so a little sneak preview of what you can expect in Good News Friday. This is a husband of a dance studio director, kind of working to bring some joy to students while they're stuck at home and doing those virtual rehearsals and classes. So all well, that story plus news, weather and traffic coming up right here on Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now at 430, Indiana University is using Marion County to learn more about the silent spreaders of COVID-19, what they hope to learn from a new study and how you can participate. Today, more people who lost their jobs because of the pandemic can file for unemployment. What you need to know about the benefits now available to gig workers and those who are self-employed. And nearly $500 billion in virus relief will become law today. We'll break down the new federal funding plan, bringing more help for small businesses and hospitals. But before we get to our top stories today, I want to thank you for joining us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is standing by this morning with a check of your forecast. And Todd, before we get to some nicer weather today, we may have some fog this morning, right? Yeah, you know, just a little bit. Yesterday was a really wet day for us, and so there's a lot of moisture in the ground, still in the atmosphere, and as these skies start to clear, that's one of the recipes that will introduce the potential, at least, for some fog. There's a dense fog advisory across the state line in Illinois, and it is western locations that will have the best potential to see this fog because you are the ones that are going to clear uh, the quickest. So the numbers you see on your screen right now, not all that bad, but we'll keep an eye on them for you for the potential of some fog to develop. And you can see those skies starting to clear a little bit off to our west already. And as far as rainfall goes, that has moved off towards the east. It's going to be a dry day for us. And we're starting this stretch uh, really today, or you can say it started yesterday, where we'll have every other day of nice weather and then potentially wet weather in the forecast. So temperatures right now are sitting in the 40s and 50s. We'll get these temperatures today all the way up into the 60s across the area with a high about 60. 
65 to 70 degrees for most of us. We're not going to be completely sunny today. It's going to be more partly cloudy to at times, maybe even mostly cloudy, but at least it's mild. At least you have the opportunity to get out and about. We'll talk more about that weekend forecast and the return of rain, Lauren, for you coming up in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look right now over on the east side. This is I-70 and Sherman Drive. This is where we have the major construction project happening. The eastbound lanes had been closed for the past two weeks or so as crews have been working in that area. They're set to close the westbound lanes this morning. It looks like they may already be closed early this morning, trying to figure out if those are drivers or construction workers. It looks like those may be maintenance crews out there this morning. So if you travel on the east side, you will need to stay off I-70 in both directions between the north split and 465 over on the east side. You can take some alternate routes, including 465 and 65 around the loop and then into the downtown area. You can also take side streets, maybe Washington Street or other roads to get you in from the east side this morning. Well, Indiana University researchers are leading a first of its kind study to learn a little bit more about those silent spreaders of COVID-19. The IU School of Medicine is now conducting a study called Tactic here in Marion County to determine how widely the virus has been spread. The researchers are asking for your help with this. They need volunteers in the county who have not tested positive to have a test kit delivered to their home. Dr. James Wood is among those leading this study. He says that the results will also help determine when it's safe for the state to return to normal. Wood says the study is important because it includes kids, a demographic that hasn't been looked at in any other studies that are happening right now in the United States. As we talk about going back to school eventually and, and getting back to social activities, um, knowing how children are um, infected and carrying the virus is a really important step in that process. Age, location, race, and ethnicity will also be used in the study. So if you want to participate, you can find a link in this story on the RTV6 app and also at our website, theindychannel.com. The Indiana State Department of Health has reported 45 new COVID-19 deaths. That brings our total for the state to 706. More than 200 of those are right here in Marion County. Since the pandemic began, more than 13,000 Hoosiers have tested positive so far. COVID-19 has killed people worldwide and families have been unable to hold those traditional funerals around the world. Maria Wildbridge was unable to be at her mother's side. Maria works in the Marion County Prosecutor's Office as a Spanish translator in all major trials. One month ago, her mother died of COVID-19 alone in Spain. Luckily, she had visited Indiana weeks before that she was killed by the virus. Josefina Linares Mendez enjoyed the shops the scenic views, and the seasonal charms of Nashville. It's what connected the matriarch from Madrid to Brown County. This was her second trip to Indiana in 20 years to visit her daughter, Maria. Maria is one of nine children, eight girls, one boy, born to Josefina and Miguel Romero. Mom, the seamstress, made the children's clothing. The family grew up in Madrid, where she had a big 80th birthday party in September. This past February, Josefina returned to Indiana to visit her grandson at Purdue and to take in Nashville as well. When the cancer survivor returned to Spain, COVID-19 would take her life. She died alone. She was cremated and honored in a private burial. The queen, La reina of her family lives on in their memories and hearts. Her Hoosier family says they feel blessed by her last trip to Indiana, knowing their love and being together was the best place to be. Well, like with many families, the goal is to one day have a celebration of life. And that's Rafael Sanchez brings us that story this morning. Now to other news, Honda stopping production at its Greensburg plant for another week because of the pandemic. The automaker planned to reopen May 1st, but pushed it back to May 8th. Production has been on hold since March 23rd. The company says it's continuing to evaluate business conditions and make adjustments. The Greensburg plant employs about 3,000 people. Indiana is paying out a record amount of unemployment benefits to help Hoosiers 
rebound and get back on their feet. Starting today, gig workers, independent contractors, and the self-employed can start applying for the benefits through the Federal CARE Act. Applicants who are approved will start seeing those benefits on May 8th. The average wait time is 21 days, and you can find out more information about unemployment resources on our website, theindychannel.com. For the fourth time since the coronavirus pandemic began, lawmakers have passed stimulus legislation to help the economy. The $484 billion primarily is an earmarked for small businesses. But already there are some questions of is this enough? ABC's Alex Perche has more right now from Washington. The House will be in order. In Washington, members of Congress back on Capitol Hill wearing masks and gloves, lining up to vote in staggered groups to pass a new relief bill. It includes $310 billion to replenish the tapped out loan program for small businesses. Rahama Wright is hoping it will keep her beauty business afloat. My business has been tremendously impacted by COVID-19. That is, if she can get it this time. She applied for a loan in the last round. The funds ran out. But who did get money? Many bigger companies like Shake Shack, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, and Sweetgreen. With outrage growing, all three now returning the millions of dollars they were given. The bill comes as U.S. unemployment has gone from bad to worse. 26 million filings since the outbreak began, numbers not seen since the Depression era. But many states have processed only a fraction of their applications. In Florida, more than 90% of people seeking aid are still waiting for their first payment from the state. How many meals? Oh, five. Five? Five, okay. Massive lines at food banks from New Jersey to Texas. I've applied for unemployment, but um, it's taking a while, so just need the help. The latest bill does not include money for state governments. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell facing criticism after suggesting hard hit states, many of which are Democratic, should file for bankruptcy if they need financial aid. This is one of the really dumb ideas of all time. People died. 15,000 people died in New York. The president asked about that at the briefing. And we'll see what happens. In all fairness, John, some states have not done very well for many years, long before the virus came. Governor Cuomo going on to cite stats from the Rockefeller Institute, showing that New York State puts $116 billion more into the federal pot than it takes out. While Senator McConnell's state of Kentucky takes $148 billion more from the federal pot than it puts in. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Well, office space is one of many safety issues that businesses must consider, and a national council is now issuing new guidelines to help. The National Safety Council formed a task force with government agencies and Fortune 500 companies to provide best practices and other materials to protect workers. The resources, the playbooks, the instructions, the policies that companies can put in place very quickly and easily uh, to support whatever their operation might be. So that's everywhere from transportation to farming, to retail, to restaurants, to manufacturing. Every environment there is a little bit different and the safety protocols you're gonna wanna put in place um, are gonna be tailored to those environments because it's so important. How we come back to work safely will in large part define how we get to the other side of this pandemic. We Companies like NASA, McDonald's, and Walgreens have already put together safety plans. The National Safety Council is going to be creative or is going to create guides rather based on those plans for other companies that do not have as many resources. At 440, some businesses are able to continue normal operations and some are going the extra mile to help others. Cluster Truck continues to deliver food with a few changes. Drivers wear masks and customers now grab the meals from the truck at the curb. And in Carmel, Cluster Truck is testing out grocery delivery. We have a small, medium, large with different assortments of, you know, dairy products, meats, um, also includes, we have a paper pack, which has paper towel, toilet paper. Well, Cluster Truck eventually hopes to expand grocery delivery to other markets, including Indianapolis. Big companies that accepted millions in payment protection loans could be forced to give it all back. Coming up, the new guidelines that are being set to make sure that the money is going to the small businesses that need it. And the first picks of the NFL draft have been made. How LSU quarterback Joe Burrow is reacting to his selection and celebrating the draft from home. Todd. And after a wet day yesterday, we get the sunshine back in the forecast today. And with that sunshine, we will also have warmer temperatures returning. We'll talk all about it coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time now is 441. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6.
measures only on RTV6. At 444, despite the coronavirus pandemic, President Trump's 4th of July celebrations will take place on Washington's National Mall as scheduled. At Wednesday's White House press briefing, Trump said that the event will move forward as it was hailed a success last year. It was held on the Lincoln Memorial and included flyovers and a military tank display. The president said authorities will probably limit the attendance for this year's event to 25% of what was seen last year. He added that, quote, this year will most likely will be standing six feet apart. Big companies that receive loans under the pay payment protection program may be forced to give it all back. The Small Business Administration just issuing new guidelines yesterday for borrowers. It implies that if eligibility for the loan can't be proven, the money should be returned by May 7th. PPP loans are intended for small businesses with 500 employees or less. A report from the Associated Press estimates that 147 publicly traded companies took out loans under the PPP. Some companies like Shake Shack and Ruth's Chris have already returned their loans. The FBI is investigating a medical office up in Michigan in connection to questionable treatment for coronavirus. Authorities raided Allure Medical Spa in Shelby Township on Thursday. Investigators wore protective gear to prevent exposure to COVID-19. The business recently promoted that it was treating coronavirus patients who aren't hospitalized using intravenous vitamin C therapy. The investigation includes allegations that the clinic provided fraudulent treatments for COVID-19 and that the clinic did not observe proper protocols to protect patients and staff from the virus. The FBI says the investigation is ongoing. Going. No one has been taken into custody at this time. United Airlines is now requiring flight attendants to wear masks. The company says it's the first major U.S. carrier to issue a change. It will begin today with 20 masks on board planes serving domestic routes and 40 on international ones. United says it will not replenish the supply after every flight. Instead, it will be done as needed. Flight attendants will also have the option to wear their own face coverings. At 4.46, we want to toss things over to Todd. It is Friday. Todd, what can we expect in today's forecast? You know, it's not a bad forecast for us today, Lauren. One, it's going to be warmer than yesterday and even more important, and it's going to be dry for us as we get some sunshine back in this forecast. And you kind of need to take advantage of uh, the sunshine today because more rain's on the way for tomorrow. Now, one of the reasons why we're dealing with a little bit of patchy fog this morning is because of the rain that we had yesterday. These numbers aren't bad as of right now, but it's not out of the question, especially in western portions of the state, we'll continue to see uh, those visibility drop and I'll keep an eye on that for you here throughout the morning hours but any fog would burn off pretty quickly once the sun comes up 40s and 50s right now for temperatures a little cooler to the north 43 in Peru 54 in Bloomington Indianapolis at 51 degrees and as we go throughout the course of the day today radar is going to be quiet as you see right now in central Indiana all the showers have exited the area when I went to sleep last night which is obviously a little earlier than most uh, around Around nine o'clock, we are still dealing with some of those showers, but they have now all now moved off into the Ohio area, and we'll continue to see that drier air that's off to our west in Illinois work in, and that's the sunshine that we'll eventually see as we get into the course of the uh, daytime hours today. We're not going to be completely sunny throughout the day today. We'll kind of kind of things will toggle back before uh, between partly to mostly cloudy skies across the area, but even with the cloud cover that will be around at times, we'll see our temperatures eventually climb up into the mid to upper 60s and that puts us right on par for where we should be for high temperatures uh, this time of year so it's a seasonable day for us now let's jump ahead to tomorrow these are your rain chances for Saturday some spotty showers will be possible in the morning the rain becomes a little more widespread throughout the late afternoon and early evening hours so anything you want to do outdoors on Saturday the earlier the better as far as it being maybe even a little bit sunny to start before the clouds build in, but then look how these showers start to develop across the area. Maybe even could be a rumble of thunder tomorrow as well uh, before sunset, and then once we get past sunset, we'll start to see uh, the threat of any thunder leave, but there could be some decent pockets of rainfall as we go into early Sunday morning. So another wet day is heading our way tomorrow as we get into the afternoon hours. Temperatures, though, not bad tomorrow, still in the low 60s. Once we get to Sunday, there will be some morning 
showers and then decreasing clouds throughout the day. But it's cooler with a high temperature that will be in the upper 50s. Your seven-day planning forecast shows a warm-up. We'll begin once we get to next week. Monday, we're back into the sunshine. 63 degrees near 70 on Tuesday with the potential for maybe even a few thunderstorms in the forecast. And then as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, temperatures will still be in the 60s. But today is a decent day. Lauren, get out there and enjoy before the rain returns by tomorrow afternoon. All right, Todd, that sounds good. Thank you so much. It is 449. The CDC recommends cleaning and disinfecting to reduce the spread of the novel coronavirus. But the trouble is that cleaning a room requires a person to be in it usually. Well, a hospital in California is working together to work its way around by using robots. The Skytron Surfaceide UVC robots are assembled in a triangle and they use ultraviolet, ultraviolet C rays to kill those germs. The hospital CEO says it cleans all of the hospital's patient rooms and also the bathrooms. It takes about 25 minutes and then you're done and then the staff come in and wheel it to the next one and we uh, go on uh, down the line and uh, do as many as we can. The light is actually so powerful that no one can be in the room when the robots are on. Thompson says the new technology is being used in addition to cleaning done by hospital staff. Tom Hanks is giving encouragement to a little boy by gifting him a typewriter. While the actor and his wife, Rita Wilson, were quarantined with coronavirus in Australia, an eight-year-old wrote a letter to the couple. He told them he was being bullied because of his name, which is Corona. Hanks decided to give Corona the typewriter that he bought, brought with him to Australia, which just happens to be made by the brand Corona. Hanks told the boy to ask an adult how a typewriter works and then write him back using it. He also signed the letter with a quote from his Toy Story franchise, You've Got a Friend in Me. With the first pick in the 2020 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. Well, there it is. LSU quarterback Joe Burrow is the first pick of the NFL draft. The Ohio native will stay close to home with the Cincinnati Bengals as his new team. He says he's excited to be picked, and even though the draft was virtual, he says he still got a celebration. I was very excited about it. I kind of initially wanted to, to do something here in Athens um, anyway and not go to Vegas, but I was, I was going to go to Vegas and um, walk across that stage, and it was going to be awesome, but you know, as soon as the pit came in, people were driving by the house, honking their horns, screaming out the window. So that's the kind of place that it is here. Very cool. Well, the Indianapolis Colts played a waiting game through the first round. They were without a pick after trading for defensive tackle to Forrest Buckner last month. They'll have the second pick in round two and a total of seven in the draft, barring any trades. The draft resumes at 7 o'clock tonight. You can watch it right here on RTV6. Saturday's coverage will begin at noon. After seeing Senator Warner's unique microwave tuna melt tutorial, Senator Kamala Harris decided, well, she needed to help him out. Still ahead, the advice she gave him in a video call. And coming up with COVID-19 business, they're having different difficult time getting loans and keeping employees on the payroll. So new at 5 o'clock, how one Knightstown business is helping others keep their doors open. It is 4.52. Stick around. We'll be right back after this short break. California Senator Kamala Harris decided she better help out Virginia Senator Mark Warner after his interesting version of a tuna melt went viral. So we told you about this story yesterday about Warner's tutorial video of him making that tuna melt. During it, he used a lot of mayonnaise, scooped dripping wet tuna straight from the can onto an untoasted white piece of bread. He added cheese, put it in the microwave, and many fellow lawmakers reacted to this recipe with shock and disgust. When uh, That's when Harris tweeted to Mark, we need to talk. Call, please. She later shared this video of her on her Instagram story, talking to Warner while making her own tuna melt. Her recipe includes fresh ingredients like celery and onions, and of course, draining the tuna, which I think is what bothered people the most in that recipe, Todd. All right, we got to get a check of our <laughs> forecast for today. Hopefully, maybe people can get outside and grill, make something a lot better than a tuna melt in the microwave this Friday. <laughs> you know, the last thing I needed to hear at 457 was somebody telling me to drain the I can't even <laughs> see it, but just just yeah. hearing it uh, in my in my ear, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, well. 
Temperatures today will be up in the mid 60s. We'll kind of toggle back and forth between partly to mostly cloudy skies throughout the day today, but it really it's a decent day for us. Tomorrow rain returns, especially in the afternoon and evening, and then there's numerous opportunities next week for rain as well. So take advantage of today. We'll talk more about your news headlines as well as your full weather forecast coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 4:57.